welcome to this video. If you're new, my name is Cheyenne and I post videos about vegan food, but also my life in general. I hate to bring this up first thing, but I've seen lately in my stats that 60% of you are not subscribed. If you're watching this video and that is the case, please reevaluate your decision. Um, no, I'm kidding, but <laughs> I really do have a lot of fun on this channel and it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed because it helps my channel grow, it supports me, and it allows me to keep doing what I love. Anywho, now that that funny business is out of the way, <laughs> in today's video, I'm going to be showing you seven cozy fall recipes. Yes, one for every day of the week. Fall, I think, is literally my favorite season, hence the seasonal attire. I just love how Christmas the weather gets and how pretty the leaves are. It's just a good time. But yeah, before we get into the video, I have a pretty big announcement to share with you all. If you couldn't notice, I literally can't stop smiling because I'm so excited to share that I have merch. <laughs> I partnered up with my friend and graphic designer Jane Huynh to create the Cheyenne Hayden x Jane Huynh 2020 collection, which features my quintessential catchphrase, eat well and be happy. If you've been watching my videos for some time, you know that I really view food as a portal into the soul and as a way to feel better spiritually, emotionally, physically, all of that jazz. I really love having fun in the kitchen and sharing my recipes with you all. I've had countless one-on-one -on -one interactions with my viewers where you guys have told me how much you appreciate the videos that I make and for that reason I wanted to find a way to give something back to you all that you could potentially wear and use on a daily basis. Oh my god I'm so excited I can't even contain myself. Okay so let me show you guys some of the designs. Some of the samples did not arrive on time so I can't show you everything but let's start off with one of my favorites which is the soft flowy cropped Tea. You can see it has the logo embroidered super tiny on the pocket. I really wanted my merch to be something that people could wear even if they didn't know who I was. So I didn't want my name plastered all over it. I really wanted it to be delicate, minimal, and reflect my personal sense of style. There's also a black version of the cropped flowy tee. Then we have, of course, because it's getting colder out, I made some cropped hooded sweatshirts. Again, the logo is stitched super tiny on the front. The cropped hoodie also comes in black and you guys all of these items are so freaking soft I didn't get a sample of it but that cropped hoodie also comes in the mauve color I will also be selling a white crew neck sweatshirt with the logo on the pocket as well as a black version of the crew neck in addition to that apparel I also made aprons which I guess is very topical Jane and I worked together to come up with the monstera leaf and avocado designs keeping with the kitchen theme I also made made mugs, which I think you guys saw me tease in my last What I Eat in a Week. There is a large version and a small version depending on how much coffee you like to have in the morning. And I really love these because they have a tiny little CHXJH. Of course, there is a Monstera leaf design as well. I also made tote bags and stickers. I made a bar necklace that has the word compassion on it because I believe that choosing a vegan or plant-based diet is at its core eating compassionately for both animals and for oneself and last but not least I made a phone case all of the phone cases on my website are completely compostable this is the avocado one and of course it comes with the monstera leaf as well and okay I'll end the self promo here I just really wanted to let you guys know because I've been working on this with Jane and with my manager for a good like six months I think like literally since quarantine started my goal was to get it out by early summer but COVID slowed everything down and I really just wanted to do my best to get this out to you guys for the holiday season so you can get it as gifts for yourselves and your loved ones. That being said, you can shop any of the items I just showed you at CheyenneHayden.com. Wow, she has her own domain. I'll link it down below as well. Okay, let's get into the video. Y'all want to see some recipes. Give it a like if you're enjoying it and I'll see you at the end. So, the first recipe I have for you all today is my classic tofu scramble paired with a hash brown. Many of you have probably seen me make this recipe before, but the reason I'm including it in this video is because it's super warm and cozy and therefore perfect for fall. Also, most of the veggies that I usually put into my scramble, like these cherry tomatoes, I get from my local farmer's market, which, if you have one close to you, is a great way to support your local farmers in this harvest season. They also taste a million times better than the store-bought alternatives. I got my hash browns from Trader Joe's and they're super easy to 
to prepare, I just place one in a skillet with some vegetable oil and let it crisp up. Once my veggies are cooked down, I like to go ahead and add some frozen spinach to add a bit of green to my meal. After letting that wilt, I add a pinch of salt along with a four and a half ounce block of tofu. After breaking it up, I add in some pink salt, garlic powder, black pepper, onion powder, cumin, turmeric, and nutritional yeast. I mix that all up and let it crisp up a bit while checking on my hash brown and voila, breakfast is served. My usual toppings are the Trader Joe's sriracha, some hemp seeds, and a little bit of ketchup for the hash brown. And if you're going super seasonal, this meal goes great with mini roasted sweet potato cubes as well. On Tuesday of this week, I had a friend over and decided to make some pumpkin chocolate chip pancakes. I did this using some pumpkin pancake mix I got from a local farm back in New York and just messed around with the measurements on the back in order to create a vegan version of the recipe. This basically just involved adding ACV and baking powder so they react with one another and create a real fluffy sort of texture, kind of like an egg would. By the way, if any of the recipes are going by too fast on the screen, rest assured that you can find all the ingredients listed out in the description below. So do not fret on that front. Once my batter was done, I added some vegan butter to the pan and went to town. Y'all, I cannot adequately describe how much comfort these pancakes brought me. They were so freaking delicious and totally worth the extra effort. I decided to cut up some fruit for shopping, namely strawberries, bananas, and apples, and then sprinkled some cinnamon and pumpkin spice on top for that extra seasonal flair. Some other toppings I had available were some flavored maple syrups, unsweetened coconut yogurt, pumpkin butter, peanut butter, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and maple syrup. I ended up adding a little bit of everything and it was so good that I had seconds. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Especially Especially that pumpkin spice flavored syrup. Ooh, like Jesus, that was delicious. On Wednesday of this week, I decided to make a squash and black bean harvest chickpea rice bowl with mushrooms and kale. For this, the first step was to slice open a small butternut squash before gutting it and chopping it up into tiny cubes. Then I went ahead and seasoned it with some first pressed olive oil, salt, pepper, onion powder, cumin, maple syrup, and chili flakes. I usually like to use chili powder, but I was out and that was the closest thing I could get. I then put that in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. For my rice, I'm using this chickpea wild rice that Bonza kindly sent over to me. Thank you, Bonza. It's kind of like orzo in size and consistency, and with all the added protein from the legumes, you really can't go wrong. Next, it was time to prep my mushrooms. For this recipe, I chose to use some baby portobello mushrooms, and I just chopped those up and placed them in a dry pan to dehydrate a tad before adding in some freshly chopped kale. At this point, my rice was a little more than done. Yes, I may have forgotten about it on the stove, so it was a tad overcooked, but I just made sure to rinse it out with some cold water to ensure that the cooking process was 100% stopped. Next, it was time to add my can of black beans, which I drained and lightly rinsed before putting them in the pan. I also decided to add some hearty vegetable broth and some salt for some extra depth of flavor. While I was allowing that to cook down, I took out my squash, which was looking absolutely scrumptious. Lastly, I added in some ketchup, a secret ingredient that makes the beans taste extra yummy, and finally the chickpea rice. Once that was all mixed up and warmed, it was basically ready to serve. To match the orzo slash risotto vibes of the dish, I topped it with some vegan parmesan, and ta-da, my dinner was ready. And oh yeah, be sure to tag me on Instagram if you decide to make any of the recipes featured in this video. On Thursday morning of this week, I had some pumpkin spice latte flavored overnight oats that I had whipped up the night before. In order to make this recipe, you're going to need about half a cup of rolled oats, a tablespoon of chia seeds, and then for the pumpkin flavor, you can choose between pumpkin puree or pumpkin butter. I put in like a fourth of a cup of pumpkin puree. Next, I just added a teaspoon of vanilla extract along with a tablespoon or so of maple syrup. Lastly, for my milk, I used this protein almond milk and just filled it up to the brim of my mason jar before adding a hefty amount of pumpkin pie spice and mixing it all up to make sure all the ingredients were evenly distributed. The recipe I was referencing also called for a squeeze of lemon. I'm not quite sure why, but I did it anyways. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Once everything's mixed up, you can just cover it and leave it in your fridge overnight to eat the next morning. The next day, your oats should have absorbed all of the liquids in the mixture and your breakfast will be ready to go. For toppings, I chose to use some sugar-free dark chocolate chips, about a tablespoon of natural peanut butter, and a sprinkle of hemp seeds. 
This may very well be my favorite recipe from this entire video, just because of how quick and easy it was to make. It's also so indulgent, like obviously you can make it whatever sweetness you'd like, but the flavors just, it's like having dessert for breakfast, so yummy. And it went great with my decaf oat milk latte. That was definitely a plus. Now, Friday was a super special day because I got to go on a little fall picnic with my roommate and our neighbors. I decided to make and bring these little mini quiches for which I'll link the recipe down below. They were very easy to make and honestly a huge hit. Everyone loved them. My neighbor Ben also made and brought a gluten-free and vegan banana pumpkin chocolate chip loaf, which was so good, and his girlfriend made and brought a turmeric latte drink to go along with it. Since I didn't get any videos of this bread before we dug in, here are some pictures from my Instagram story. That very night, I felt like having something very cozy and comforting for dinner, so I decided to look up an easy one-pot pasta dish for which I could use some chickpea shells that Bonza had also sent my way. For this recipe, you're going to need four cups of vegetable broth, one whole cup of pumpkin puree, half a cup of white wine or a touch of vinegar, two tablespoons of olive oil, half a medium onion, chopped, three to four large cloves of garlic, minced, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, a dash of red pepper flakes, some salt to taste, and a few cracks of black pepper. Lastly, you're going to add Add your pasta of choice and then start to bring that sucker to a boil. To add some color to this dish, I decided to also chuck in some frozen broccoli and green beans, although you could add any veggies of your choice. Once the pasta and the veggies are cooked all the way through, you can go ahead and add some vegan sour cream or yogurt along with whatever vegan cheese you have on hand. I also added a generous dash of nutritional yeast. This just ensures that your pasta is as creamy as possible and it also helps neutralize the strong flavors coming from the vinegar or wine that you used. Once I had let the sauce cook down, it was time to serve. Now, this isn't my recipe and it was my first time making it, so I didn't really know how it'd come out. After tasting it, if anything, I'd probably do less broth next time and add a bit more vegan dairy to make sure the sauce is really as creamy as possible. Otherwise, all the flavors were nice and very fall themed indeed. On Saturday, I decided to put my baking pants on and make some pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. Mmm, these were so good. Side note, to my American friends, if you have not yet already, please get out there and vote as soon as possible. Consider this your reminder. Let me inspire your sense of civic duty. Okay, now back to the recipe. To make these muffins, you're going to need a whole can of pumpkin puree, a third of a cup of vegetable oil, half a cup of unsweetened almond milk, one and a fourth cups of brown sugar, which I did not have, so I made my own out of white sugar and molasses instead, one and three fourths cup of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, some nutmeg, ground ginger, and a pinch of ground cloves, which I did not have, so I used pumpkin pie spice instead. Lastly, you can fold in your chocolate chips or walnuts or whatever you want to put in them, and then the batter's ready to be poured into your baking cups. Now, these are going to bake for around 25 minutes at 375 degrees, but I have a sneaking suspicion that I had the oven at 350 because they kind of came out a little underdone. I mean, don't get me wrong, they were delicious, but perhaps a tad squishy for my liking? I mean, I've always said, I'm not a baker, I'm a cook. Well, any hoops. After making myself a little latte in my beautiful Eat Well and Be Happy mug, available now at CheyenneHayden.com, I devoured that muffin like it was my business. Booyah, vegan sweets for the win. On the last day of this week, I decided to outdo my Myself and attempted to make some quinoa kale and mushroom stuffed acorn squash. I think acorn squash is probably my favorite kind of squash. Out of all the squash breeds, it's just got the nicest shape, the cutest coloring, and I don't know, I just really like it. I seasoned this one very similarly to the way I did the butternut squash earlier in the week. After lathering up all the open surfaces, I flipped them over and tossed them in the oven to roast at 400 for an hour. Next, I started prepping my quinoa by rinsing it and setting it to boil in some salted fresh water. For this meal, I decided to use shiitake mushrooms because I slept prefer their texture and taste to that of portabella's. I was craving something stronger and they just happened to have that it factor. I will say you may be seeing some repeated veggies in this video, like the kale for example, but to be honest, I mostly rely on the farmer's market for my produce, so whatever's in season is what I buy. And that happens to be kale, mushrooms, tomatoes, apples, squash, etc. So I hope you guys don't view that as a lack of creativity because I promise I'm doing my best with what I've got. Anyways, to the stuffing mixture, I added some leftover vegan meat and tomato sauce that my roommate had made the night 
before, but you can add any other kind of vegan protein or leave it out entirely if you'd like. After everything was mixed up, I just covered it, took my squash out of the oven, and then it was time to assemble. This meal honestly came out like a work of art. I have only attempted a stuffed squash once before, and this was equally as gratifying. Something about it not taking too much effort, but still being gorgeous just does it for me. I don't know. Anyways, after having my dinner, I took the opportunity to walk outside and admire the sunset hitting the fall foliage outside my apartment. What a nice scenic end to a lovely week. All right, you guys, those are all the recipes I have for you all today. If I didn't come up with it myself, any recipe I used will be linked in the description. I hope you guys are having a healthy and safe harvest season. Feel free to comment down below what your favorite recipe was. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram to keep up with what I'm cooking and eating on the daily. And don't forget to subscribe. Again, my new merch store will be linked down below for you all to check it out. And I'll see you in my next one. Eat well and be happy. Bye.